Now, if you can't get the plumber to call you back or you just wanna save a little time and money, the ability to install shutoff valves is a good skill to have for any homeowner. Now I'm in the middle of a DIY bathroom remodel and I need to install shutoff valves for the first time here at the vanity. So I'm gonna pick the Shark Bite shutoff valve, which is perfect for DIYers and is an easy install, but there are a couple of key pieces of information that I'm gonna call out for you to avoid multiple trips to the hardware store and avoid any future leaks. So let's jump into it. So you wanna start off by shutting your main water supply to the house completely off and then going to the lowest fixture, whether that's a faucet or a tub like this, and turn it on to drain out as much water as possible. Now this is the first of two main hiccups that I see homeowners get in while wanting to install shutoff valves, and that is they might have a copper line like this, which is short. Now what I mean is we need to cut off in this case, a 90 degree fitting, maybe in your case, an old shutoff, maybe a multi-turn shutoff giving you trouble, and we need at least one inch of clean copper to properly get the shark bite seated. And that goes for a compression fitting shutoff valve as well. Now, if I had plenty of pipe, I'd just jump in here with my mini pipe cutter. I would put this edge against the 90 degree fitting, and then I would just do my rotations, but the problem is that will remove another half inch of copper pipe, leaving the excess copper too short for my shark bite. So you need to assess how much extra solder do you have. I have a little bit of a drip on the bottom that I might have to sand off with the emery cloth, but I actually wanna cut this pipe as close to this fitting as possible. So you can either use a hacksaw and kind of slowly go about it, carefully cutting that off, flush with this fitting or flush with your, your old shutoff that you're removing, or in my case, I'm actually gonna use an oscillating tool with a carbide blade. I have a paint roller pan down to catch any excess water because you are gonna get some water leak, as you see right there. Now, I wasn't a big believer in the oscillating tool, but with a little practice and taking your time, this can make a flush and clean cut about as good as you can get, honestly. If you're still nervous about making the cuts, it's not a bad idea to spend a couple dollars and get a six inch or 12 inch long piece of half inch copper and do practice cuts out in your garage. Adjust the speed of your oscillating tool, do vertical, horizontal cuts, do different speeds, different amount of force, or just even practice with a hacksaw. If you just don't have that much time with that tool, doing practice cuts is gonna set you up for success when you go to cut the lines that you do not want to make mistakes on. So you've made it past the first hurdle and now you have at least more than an inch of copper line. Now we need to prep that copper line. Here I'm using emery cloth to get out all the paint, but specifically the old solder. This is actually a shark bite tool and it's a deburring tool. But you could also have a traditional deburring like this to help you get the burrs off the outside and inside. Now you wanna mark with a Sharpie at one inch in on the copper line, or you can use that same deburring tool as a template because it's a, the exact depth you need at one inch, which is how deep you want to press the shark bite on the copper line. Now, if you need a quick reference for these tools that we're using on this project or any other tools that I recommend for DIYers, you can check the link in the description. It goes to our Amazon store and specifically in the plumbing section, you'll see those deburring tools we'll use and things like a half inch shark bite cap, which I always have on me just in case I need to cap off a copper line quickly and don't want to run to the store. Or even worse, I have an active leak and I need to get that capped quickly. And now we're at the home stretch and, and really this is the beauty of shark bite fittings for DIYers. If you've done your prep work, you have more than one inch of the copper line coming out, you cleaned off any paint or especially the solder to make sure you have a consistent outside diameter, you've made your mark so you know how far to press that shark bite in, really that's all there is to it is to press the shark bite on. Now one thing that can be easy to forget is to actually put a new chrome flange on prior to putting your shutoff valve on. It's not the end of the world if you don't do this, but because they do make split flanges, but it's just easier to get it done now prior to installing the shutoff. And then there is multiple different shutoff valves you can get. You can get different configurations. This one is a 90 degree. The inlet half inch copper is 90 degrees offset to the outlet, which is a 3 8 compression fitting. 
That is the most common fitting in my area for water lines going from to your vanity, your kitchen sink, and also your toilet. Or if you wanted to get this outlet coming straight off and the quarter turn on off up top, you can also do that. So just take your time making sure you get the right valve for your application. And here is actually the part where you can make a mistake. You can start to press your fitting in and maybe think that it's fully seated, but it is not. So what's going on here is here's a cross section of a half inch shark bite cap. And then that copper line, the half inch comes in and it hits the actual shark bite portion, the thing that holds these fittings onto a line. It starts to go past that, you will reach some resistance there, and then you'll hit the O-ring. And that can kind of make it feel like it's fully seated, but it is not, and that can lead to leaks later on. You'll hear plumbers kind of blaming shark bites uh, for leaking, and I would say there's a high probability that was just improperly installed. You have to fully seat that, where then the O-ring would make a complete seal around the copper pipe and that's why we need to make that depth reference mark to make sure we're all the way seated on the pipe and have a good seal around that o-ring okay and now that is a fully seated shark bite fitting now if you guys are still not sold and kind of on the fence when it comes to shark bites you can check out this video and it really goes a to z and kind of weighs the pros and the cons of shark bites from a professional the Got to Learn channel, for my money, is probably the best plumbing channel on YouTube. And I'm not just a person that puts YouTube videos out, I also consume a ton of YouTube. So I think you're gonna really enjoy that channel. Thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.